And, okay, and there you go. So my name is Jimmy Poucher, and I work for Apex Base. Well, we own Apex Base. Life can get very boring, I think, especially for people like us who are always looking for something new, for a new adventure. So we're constantly traveling, we're constantly looking for that next great thing. Yeah! Troy Widgery from GoFast called me, and he said, hey, I need a jumper who's 165 pounds to do this stunt. And I said, well, what's the stunt? And he told me the stunt, I'm like, okay, I'll lose the weight. Tell me, <laughs> tell me what I need to do. Cause he told me about the, the human slingshot. And I said, oh, that's, that's obviously pretty much any base jumper wants to do that. So then I got Dukes on board. For me, the slingshot came to be about, actually, uh, Jimmy invited me over. I was super stoked on it. And it's something I always wanted to do. It was a very unique experience. It's a real honor to have him ask me to do something like that. So I'm super proud and super stoked. So we've been, come up through the sport of base jumping together and he's solid. He, I know that I can trust him to put it on the dime in the stadium and to keep a cool head and to also do the rigging side of the, of the stunt. Because of my construction background, I was good with all the machinery and all the knowledge of how to use the cranes and, and stuff. Both Dukes and I wanted to know the system intimately. If we're gonna put our lives on the line, which is exactly what we were doing. So we basically built it from scratch, uh, and then we had to do all the testing from scratch. It was very tricky because we, had, we were very controlled in what we could do, so it's a lot of trigonomics with the angle of attack and the way that things work with getting over the wires, and we had cert only a certain amount of space. And this thing takes a lot to set up, the human slingshot. It really takes space because we've got three three big cranes, 200 ton cranes and a franner with 27 tons of weight and, and there's kilometers of rope and I think we went through $10,000 worth of rope that weekend. So we're, we're in the sun, it's so hot, we're in Dubai, so the, it's very hot there anyway. And we're working, we're raising chains and raising weights and, and hauling sandbags and filling sandbags and, and getting everything and Eric Strauss who, who invented this system from da Vinci's drawings. He is over there doing calculus to figure out all the angles and everything. And we're just like, okay, wow, just tell us where to cut. It was pretty intense because the, the ropes were fraying and, and breaking and things like that. And basically when the, the 27 tons of weight drops, that actually gets, there's a bit of slack on the ropes and, that, and they're bouncing into, into each other and, and jamming and actually crushing and, and severing the, the ropes. So you're laying down and you need to get your head against the board, your back against the board, your butt against the board, your back, your knees, your feet, your heels, your hands, your fingers, everything, so that when that board releases, you're already against the board and you don't get smacked. If my head is an inch off that board, I, it's gonna just get like, somebody's punching you in the back of the head as hard as they can. But I, yeah, I call the sling bed the coffin, because they feel like you're just lying there, just going, waiting, waiting for it, you know? So we, I, I did anyway, I like to keep death pretty close to me, it keeps me alive. So we're launching sandbags and loading the system and raising the system higher. It came a time with the sandbag testing. But eventually you had to have a human do the test, basically. It was sort of like a guinea pig. And that's where I came into it because I understood the Dyneema rope from my Hollywood friend's background in stunt rigging. And I knew that a few frayed pieces weren't going to make a difference. The end of the day, it's dark. We're moving the whole system over to the stadium the next morning and, and the, the ropes had already frayed a bit, and I'm just like, I'm done. I'm ready to go have a beer, I'm done. Dukes is like, I'll go. I'm like, what? So when it came time to do the human test, um, I was happy to do it, although scared, of course. But um, I knew that if we didn't do the test, the whole thing was gonna get canceled. When I realized how uncomfortable I was, was when I actually got launched, <laughs> and it was super, super intense. The speed at which this thing went was undeniably the fastest experience of my life. Like, I think it was like six, seven Gs, about 200 Ks an hour in, in a second, basically. And it was just full on. I've never had trouble processing information that quick since my first skydive. So it really was just like, holy crap. This is on. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. I went into it and just didn't fight it, but just went to a beautiful slow front loop at the apex of it. 
and then started falling again. But doing that, I'm looking at all these massive buildings of Dubai and right on the beach. And we can barely see him and it's just, and he pulls and lands and we were just, the, the amount of energy at that point was just so high. Holy shit. Holy fucking Jesus Christ. The most memorable moment was like, if you think of the Wiley e. Cody uh, cartoons where it, as he gets to the apex, he holds a sign up that says, I helped. And then he falls down. We actually got to experience that. So, such a unique experience that I'll never ever forget that first one. It was very painful with the, the shock loading of the coffin and stuff, so we worked through that for the next one. Um, but, you know, no pain, no gain, I guess. <laughs> so, what are your hopes for tomorrow evening then? That it works. <laughs> <laughs> so, I can have a beer. <laughs> okay, man, good luck with that. Thanks for stopping, Josh. Sweet as the cool. And then, you know, then we set up over the show with uh, all the wires and stuff. And that's another ball game again. So Jimmy did his test jump. So to get on the system, you, you get on the high lift and, and you get, get taken over to the system, which is already tension. So there's a 50,000 pound weight sled that's raised six feet in the air. And then the whole system's brought to tension, so it's ready to go. So the only thing holding it is a snap shackle. Eric, the engineer, pulls and he releases you. So you're on the thing and you have no control. So you're just along for the ride, basically. You're the rock in the slingshot. So you're climbing onto this thing from the lift and you're six feet in the air and you know that this thing is tensioned to go zero to 200 in one second. So you're climbing on that thing, you're terrified. If you're not on the thing correctly, it'll tear your head off. It'll be lucky if you survive it, you probably won't. And then I hold my breath and I cinch down, dude, like the jet fighter, is they, they clinch down to keep the blood in your brain. It's not quite the same because they're vertical and we're horizontal, which is intentional. So the blood goes backwards, not straight towards your feet. If the blood goes towards your feet, like if you're vertical, the blood goes out of your brain and you pass out. So we stay conscious, but for me, I didn't know. So I was like, and ready and pressed against the board and then wham! In one second, you've traveled 200 feet and you're through the heads of the crane and you're out and then, it becomes just amazing. Once you're through the heads of the crane, now there's nothing for you to hit. You're away from the board. Then you can finally relax a little bit, although you're still super pumped up. But then you hit the apex of the arc, which is, we figured, about 350, maybe 400 feet. I got it. Oh. And then you're weightless. And that is the, that's the reward for all of the work, for all the stress, for the, all the, like, the, the punches that you, you, know, you hit you know, when you get hit with that board. It's that moment of weightlessness. You're all of a sudden, like in three seconds or less, and then all of a sudden you get that roller coaster top of the hill sensation that you only get at a zero G apogee where all of a sudden everything becomes weightless and you get, whoa. I did my test jump and didn't go to plan. So if you look at Dukes' second jump, when they release it, that board kicks sideways and he's up against the webbing and he's like, I'm gonna die. He said it was so scary. And to us, it looked like he just went up and did a bunch of flips and you know that's what he wanted to do. And so Dukes gets flung sideways. If his arm would have gotten caught in the webbing there, it'd been torn off, I mean, for no, without a doubt. So he lands, he, he does this perfect landing, lands perfect, he comes off and I'm like, yeah, dudes, and he's just like, whoa, and I'm like, what, what, and he's like, you didn't see it? And we're like, no, we didn't see anything, it looked perfect. And he's like, man, and he explained to us what happened. But it worked out well, uh, and, and obviously when things go to heavy, you stay calm, and, um, and that, that set us up basically for the show. Okay, so everybody, uh, if you can count really loud with him so I can hear you. Yell it out. Okay, boys. Here we go. Hey, girl. Yeah, boy. Yep, feeling good. Yep. Yeah. this into a 
stadium full of a couple thousand people and everybody just went nuts. I mean, you can imagine what it looks like to, ha to see a human being launched 400 feet into the air and then it's like, wow, that person's dead. And then they pull a parachute and they land. I mean, it's, as a spectator, it's just amazing. So we've now refined the system even, it's even better, it's even safer. It worked perfectly. We had it down perfect by the end. So yeah, the human slingshot for me was a once in a lifetime opportunity. Um, it was a, the most craziest thing I've ever done to date and I do a lot of crazy things. The feeling of getting thrown through the air at that speed with that amount of G-force in that little time was something I'll never ever forget. So now we're looking to actually take it into a stadium environment where let's say a concert's going on or, or some kind of truck rally and then we can actually be launched into the stadium from outside the stadium. Hopefully we can do it again because I really would like to work with this more and, and see what we're capable of and see where we could do this. I think we could do this from the top of buildings and from the top of cliffs in wingsuits and go fly. So I'm looking forward to the future we've, we've, we know it works it does work and we've already got you know a couple perspective you know people who are saying yes we want to do this I think uh, everyone should do this but I think I should do it more <laughs>